Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshina. I'm gonna be sharing all of the books that I read in March. Eh, March? Yeah, okay. It's been quite the month. We had spring break, we had report cards due, and I have been thinking a lot about life. And so I might talk more about that at the end of the video, but I will start with the books. So I'm gonna start with my favorites and work down to my least favorites because I read two amazing five-star books this month that I can't wait to share. I've talked about both of them kind of a lot, but I will link any videos that I did talk about these books. I'll link them down below. And then I will also list all of the books down below with the authors. So if you wanna look them up yourself, like on Goodreads or something, you can do that. So the first book that I want to share is called A Broken Kind of Beautiful by Katie Ganchert. This was a five-star book for me. I loved it. It is such a solid story and it follows a model and kind of her life of never feeling like enough, like her looks are all that matter. And she is 25, so she's kind of aging out of the prime age to be a model. And so she's feeling desperate and she ends up booking a job in a smaller town for her stepmother. And she is gonna model wedding dresses for her stepmother. She decides to do it and there is a photographer that is her love interest. And then there's also kind of like a storyline of her kind of redemption and coming to Jesus because her stepmom is a Christian and so is the photographer and it's it's such a beautiful story like truly I thought it was amazing it was definitely like Francine Rivers Charles Martin Becky Wade type caliber for me um, I loved it so definitely my favorite book by this author now and I can't wait to read all the rest of her books because what a solid author um, so definitely recommend that one the next one that I liked like equally the same is called Before I Called You Mine by Nicole Deese. Never heard of this author or this book. So I checked if my library had it and it did. So amazing. I read it and it's so good. It follows this woman who is I think 31. She's a grade one teacher and she is single and her family gives her a hard time about that. But without telling her family, she decides that she wants to be a mother more than she wants to wait to be married to be a mother. So she decides to adopt from China. So you follow the story of her adoption process, but then also she ends up meeting a man who is incredible, he loves Jesus, and they get along lovely, like they just, they hit it off. And so it kind of makes her question everything, like do I pursue this man or do I pursue adoption? Because she signed up as a single woman to adopt, so she can't just say, oh, I have a boyfriend now, like, it's all about stability for the child, so she has to stay single. Um, I forget for how long, but yeah, so it's her struggle of like, God, I, I don't know what to do. And boy, can I relate. And I just loved her heart for Jesus. She, it was so real. The faith in here was really, really good. There were a lot of comical, funny moments. Like the dialogue was definitely really good. Um, maybe just a tad cheesy, but really funny funny cheese, I guess. So I loved it and I will for sure be reading more from this author. She has a new release coming out this month and so I can't wait to see it. Yeah, so definitely recommend those two. So my other five-star book was Holes by Louis Sachar. I read this to my class and I love this book. I think it's so clever and funny and just interesting. I, I really like this story. So my kids liked it fine. Closer to the end, it started getting a little slow with like Stanley and Zero wandering around. I love the story and I just think it's great. So we also watched the movie as a class after and that was really good too. Then I read The Hobbit and I gave this four stars. I am really glad that I read it. I'm glad that I can say I know the story now. Um, all of you told me there's actually three movies for this one book and I had no idea, so I don't know when I'll ever get to those movies. Either way, I'm very glad that I read this. I have realized that reading about like fantasy creatures like goblins and elves and dwarves and all the things doesn't interest me. That's not the appeal of fantasy for me, so good to know. I will definitely look at other fantasy books that come up and see kind of what the plot is going to be because depending on the characters, I just am not as keen to read it, but I definitely loved Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo? Bilbo Baggins. I feel like I say that funny. Um, he's a great character. I really liked his character arc and he's very funny and relatable. So that was fun. 
Um, so yeah, four stars. My other four star book was That Sounds Fun by Annie F. Downs. I really enjoyed this. It's so nice to see her share about her life. I find I've only this is only the second book that I've read by her but from what I gather a lot of the time her books are like kind of biographies she's just sharing what she's learning about God in the moment which I really appreciate because it's more like modern and relatable this one like her book before this is called remember God and I gave that one five stars I loved it this one got four because she goes deep, but I wish she had gone deeper, kind of with the faith aspect of fun and her struggle and like she shared struggles, but it still felt surface level. And maybe it's because I listened to the audiobook, I might have felt closer to it if I physically read it. And that's kind of why I don't love listening to audiobooks. But yeah, I just, I was like, mm, I, I wish there was a bit more to this, but there was nothing wrong with it. I really enjoyed seeing all that she shared and she definitely had me thinking about all the hobbies in my life and if they add to my life or not. But if you like Annie, I for sure would recommend reading this book because she shares a lot about things that I had no idea that she had gone through. So that was cool to see too. Next, I read The Killing Tide by Danny Petrie and I gave this three stars. So yeah, I put made a video about how sometimes our favorite authors disappoint us. You know, I would still call Danny Petrie one of my favorite authors because her Alaskan Courage series is just amazing and I still love it. I still think about it. It's been a year since I've read them, but I can still vividly remember the characters and all that happened and my experience. Like, it just was so good. So that kind of had my expectations really high for this new book because this is the first book in her newer series that's coming out. And I just found it boring. Like there were just so many characters and it, I felt like it jumped around a lot plot wise and perspective wise. And I just didn't connect to the characters the way I did with the Alaskan Courage series. So it's too bad. Um, I don't think I will continue with this trilogy. I think it's a trilogy. So bummer, but still like if you like um romantic suspense christian then i this is a solid one it's just it wasn't for me okay my next three star was sherwood by megan spooner this really should be more like a two i didn't end up liking the plot or the main character of maid marion she ended up replacing robin hood because at the very beginning of the book so this is not a spoiler because it's in the synopsis Robin Hood dies and so Maid Marian goes into grief but then she also is like kind of accidentally pretends to be him but then she decides to really take it on and be him but pretending that she's him so everyone thinks that he's still alive and like she kind of like hears his ghost and like there's this ghosty thing going on and I didn't buy the romance at all and in the end I didn't like where her character went I felt like it was just too much I, I didn't like it so overall didn't really like this book I should probably get two stars okay the other book I gave three stars is Crossroads by William Paul Young so this one had similar potential to be like the shack but it kind of fell flat for me this guy is in a coma and Jesus comes and visits him and takes him on this journey of rediscovering life and all the things. He ends up kind of being a spirit that a few characters in the hospital can not see but they can hear him and so they get to know each other through that and he kind of like watches their life in the hospital because his body is in the hospital too and it's how he like grows as a person and repents and yeah finds the true meaning of life but I just found it like not that exciting to follow and I didn't I didn't like it. I don't know. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong, like theologically or whatever, but just enjoyment level and like connectedness, I, I didn't have anything. So yeah, that was kind of weird. Then my last three star is The Life Below by Alexandra Minear. This is book two to the final six duology. And I thought it was a solid end. I liked it. Nothing that exciting. I wish there was more of them actually on the planet slash moon once they get there like and explore the aliens more almost it could have had a third book i think to do that but whatever this book was mostly them in space traveling to where they're going and all the discoveries they make along the way and relationships and stuff 
So I liked that part, but I was kind of waiting for them to get where they were going and then do some exploring. And that was like the very end and it ended abruptly and I didn't really get it. Like I definitely was skimming a lot, but I was still like, I have no idea what's going on. And so whatever. <laughs> so yeah, still a good YA sci-fi though. I definitely would recommend it for young adults. And the last book, that's it, yeah. The last book is Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Shire. And I did not rate this, I just marked it as read on Goodreads because this is like a workbook devotional thing. And I actually technically didn't finish it. I stopped after week four and there's six weeks in this. This is the little workbook that I was doing for Lent. And I wanted to talk a little bit about it and kind of like what's going on, I guess. There was nothing wrong with this, but I think I just wasn't in the place to get out of it what it meant. It started making me strive to hear God's voice and I started getting discouraged when I wasn't <laughs> and God actually was speaking to me through this and made me realize that there was a lot of things I was doing for Lent just to prove that I could do it and never I didn't start out that way you know but I just I can be very disciplined and that can kind of get in the way of just the heart of why you're doing something and I know my heart was in the right place but it just it got to a point where I was doing this out of like it's the day I have to do it and like I had gotten a couple days behind and I just felt like this pressure to finish it just to finish it and so when I was reading it I started having like a negative response because it was making me feel bad about myself basically because I was so behind the other thing if you remember I had mentioned in a vlog that I was fasting coffee for Lent and about halfway or maybe not even halfway um, a couple weeks into Lent I strongly felt God say to stop fasting coffee because but it was becoming again a thing where I was like proving it to myself more so than to him like out of a heart of worship it was more so I, I'm, I'm gonna do this no matter what and there was just one day where I thought man I wish I could have a cup of coffee and I strongly felt God say have one and you can keep having one <laughs> and I just realized that I was doing a lot of things that was making me strive and not just rest in his grace that is a very hard lesson for me to learn and I'm still learning it and I'm still in the midst of it it feels like but he's so good and he's so patient and I'm not gonna get emotional but I I just I guess I'm sharing this because maybe some of you feel like either you're not good enough because you aren't disciplined or you're so disciplined because you want to please him and he never asked that of us you know he he didn't ask me to prove myself to him and so I had started doing that and I realized that it was, it was actually affecting a lot of other areas in my life of me feeling like I have to please God and, and prove to him my loyalty and my devotion and I was getting to be miserable. And so, wow, uh, I know that a lot of us struggle to even just open our Bible every day, but I'm just learning there is literally grace for everything and no matter where you are, there is grace for where you are. It's always about relationship and it's always about love. And I forgot, I forgot that. And so I just wanted to share, um, that's why I didn't finish this book. And yeah, um, thank you for listening if you did. And I really, I pray that no one takes this the wrong way. I, I just, I'm just sharing where I'm at and my heart. Thank you for watching this wrap up, you guys. I hope you have a really good weekend and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.